Hi, I thought I'd have a look at this. Um, this is an electronic fuel injection from the Rover V8. It's really old technology. It's from the 1990s, uh, but uh, still around and uh, quite interesting to look at it from the kind of history of it. So I have looked at these before briefly, um, but, but I'll look inside again. If I take the look at the actual board, it's a, an 8-bit computer in here. This is a a processor, an 8-bit process, it's actually a motor, based on the Motorola 6800, it's a 603 version. And this is our PROM and we have got some uh, IOs for, this is uh, for ATD conversion uh, and the likes. So basically the, the processor is in this area. Uh, but the, what I've done is I've modified this one to take these old EPROMs, this was uh, uh, a time where we actually could pro program EPROMs. So the, the image for the software for running this and the fuel mapping is all done on this or taken from this uh, ROM. Uh, I took the original one out. The original one was on the board so I desoldered it and put in a socket and copied the image using an old piece of technology or an EPROM programmer. This is uh, where you actually can put in a master copy and then copy that down onto another prom uh, and put the image on there. These uh, have got windows on them. These are the old uh, way of uh, erasing these with UV light. Uh, reset all the registers so you could then reprogram them if you changed that. So you can also connect this up to uh, a computer and actually interrogate it for fault codes and such like things. So I wanted to try and set that up as well um, and I ended up getting a bit of an old harness from a vehicle but I found actually there's a great advantage of this is that you can actually test the sensors as well. So all the information from the vehicle's uh, the sensors feed in through this cable uh, into the ECU so we can use this cable and plug sensors in and then uh, interrogate them which means you can do tests of the sensors without it being on the vehicle uh, and I can demonstrate that actually. So you don't really actually need very much to interrogate this uh, you just need a 12 volt supply onto the cable and but you do need a, a, a serial connection so that this lead is, a, is made up uh, with a, for a serial connection to to this, this connector on the harness. Uh, so this, this connector here is the one that sends the data serially between this computer and a laptop and there's some nice bits of software particularly uh, Rover Gauge is a great piece of software very stable and will interrogate this quite well. Okay what I'm also going to connect up is a couple of sensors that I might want to check out. A uh, common one to check out is this. This is a, an extra air valve. There's a stepper motor in here which can move this little seal to adjust the airflow into the engine or the bypass airflow and this uh, plugs into the harness here. And the other one uh, it's worth checking is a, an airflow meter uh, and that has the connection here. So I can plug that in as well to the harness. I've got the throttle potentiometer, it's a non-standard one and uh, I think we're kind of good to go. So all it needs is 12 volts on here now. Okay, when it switches on, the first things it'll do, you'll hear the, the relay coming in uh, for the, the 12 volt supply and also you'll hear the, the fuel uh, pump come in to prime. There's also a light here, on the side here, which will come on momentarily, which is the check engine light. So it's just a, a lamp test for that. So this is effectively ignition and you see the light flashes and the relay primes the pump. So we are now basically on ignition. So this is the Rover Gauge software and I've got a couple of resistors set so that the engine temperature is saying just under 50 and so is the, the fuel sensor. So there's two sensors, I've got 1K resistors fixed in them just to give me that. There's obviously nothing running so it's detecting nothing. But I can change quite a few things. I can adjust the position, uh, position of the throttle potentiometer uh, and you can see that varies with with position so that's a test for that one. It also shows me the 
mains voltage, the supply voltage is 13.4 volts, that's from a power supply. Another one that's really useful is the idle air control and with that one you can adjust how many steps that, that will make. Um, so you'll see if the valve will adjust when I send the command to that. It should. You can see the adjustment being made there. It's quite a useful test. These tend to gum up with carbon and then stop working as well. And there's no sensor sending information back for position. So it is done purely by steps in and out. And if the engine doesn't respond properly, then it will have to wait till the computer then sends another instruction to it. And that can be enough time for, say, a, f a stall or a, a, the engine speed to vary a bit. So it's quite a good way of testing these. One last thing, if the car is op operating at full temperature and the va this extra air valve is closed when you switch the engine off, it will reset that to fully open for restarting. Interesting to note in the um, airflow meter here, just turn this all off, the, um, the sensor is actually, this it's buried in, in right in here, and this is the airflow area here. So there's actually a uh, two components here. There's a, a temperature sensing device and we've also got a little heated wire, hence the, the term the hot wire flow uh, meter. Uh, and the idea is that the, there's a current going through the, the hot wire and as the faster the air blows over that, the higher the current would be required to to um, keep it at a certain temperature or the resistance goes down as the, as the temperature is cooled by the, the flowing air and that's proportional to the, uh, the flow of air through the meter. So an interesting device.